Welcome to Study with Smith Test Guide. This is a free dumb question for CCNA. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with the series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this free dumb question series of videos. Thanks for your help. These questions are carefully prepared after obtaining a paid subscription, but I am sharing them with you for free. They have been immensely helpful in my successful CCNA attempt. In this video we'll take a look at CCNA exam version 1.0, CCNA 200-301, topics related questions. So, today's topic is 1. 1. B layer 2 and layer 3 switches. Let's go to question 1. What is the primary function of a layer 2 switch? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is forward data based on MAC addresses within the same network segment. A layer 2 switch operates at the data link layer, layer 2, of the OSI model. Its primary function is to forward data frames within the same network segment based on MAC addresses. It uses MAC address tables to learn and make forwarding decisions. Let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 2. Which OSI model layer does a layer 3 switch primarily operate at? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is C, network layer. A layer 3 switch primarily operates at the network layer, layer 3, of the OSI model. It can make routing decisions based on IP addresses, allowing it to route traffic between different subnets or network segments. Let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 3. What is the primary advantage of a layer 3 switch over a layer 2 switch? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is B, ability to route traffic between different subnets. One of the primary advantages of a layer 3 switch over a layer 2 switch is its ability to route traffic between different subnets or network segments. Layer 3 switches have routing capabilities, which allows them to make forwarding decisions based on IP addresses and facilitate communication between different IP subnets. Let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 4. Which protocol do layer 2 switches use to forward data frames based on MAC addresses? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is D, Ethernet. Layer 2 switches use the Ethernet protocol to forward data frames based on MAC addresses. Ethernet frames contain source and destination MAC addresses, allowing layer 2 switches to make forwarding decisions within the same network segment. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 5. Which type of switch is capable of making routing decisions based on IP addresses? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is B, Layer 3 switch. A Layer 3 switch is capable of making routing decisions based on IP addresses, unlike Layer 2 switches, which operate primarily at the data link layer, Layer 2, and forward frames based on MAC addresses. Layer 3 switches operate at the network layer, layer 3, and can route traffic between different IP subnets. Let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 6. What is the purpose of LANs, virtual LANs, in networking? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is C, to segment a physical network into logical broadcast domains, VLANs, Virtual LANs are used to segment a physical network into multiple logical broadcast domains. This segmentation enhances network efficiency and security by isolating traffic within each VLAN. Devices in the same VLAN can communicate as if they are on the same physical segment, even if they are physically located in different parts of the network. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 7. Which protocol is commonly used by layer 3 switches to dynamically learn and exchange routing information? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is C, OSPF. OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, is a commonly used dynamic routing protocol at the network layer. It enables layer 3 switches to dynamically learn and exchange routing information with other routers in the network. OSPF uses a link state routing algorithm and calculates the shortest path to destination networks. Let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 8. What is the function of ARP, address resolution protocol, in a layer 2 or layer 3 switch? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is A, T, 
to map MAC addresses to IP addresses. ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, is used to map IP addresses to MAC addresses in a Layer 2 or Layer 3 switch. When a device wants to communicate with another device on the same network, it sends an ARP request to find the MAC address corresponding to the destination IP address. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, let's go to question 9. Which statement accurately describes the difference between Layer 2 and Layer 3 switches? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is C. Layer 2 switches forward frames based on MAC addresses, while Layer 3 switches root data based on IP addresses. Layer 2 switches operate at the data link layer, Layer 2, and make forwarding decisions based on MAC addresses. They are efficient for local network traffic. Layer 3 switches operate at the network layer, Layer 3, and can route traffic between different subnets based on IP addresses, providing inter-subnet communication. Let's move on to the final question. Okay, let's go to question 10. What is a key feature of quality of service, QoS, on Layer 2 and Layer 3 switches? Pause the video now to select the best answer. Okay, the answer is B. QoS prioritizes and manages network traffic to meet specific performance requirements. Quality of service, QoS, is a feature in Layer 2 and Layer 3 switches that allows network administrators to prioritize and manage network traffic based on specific requirements. QoS ensures that critical traffic, such as voice or video, receives higher priority over less time-sensitive data. This helps maintain optimal network performance and user experience. So, here comes, colon, supplementary materials. The questions here are found in the email. Please comment with your email address in the comments section, and I will forward them to you. Please don't forget to subscribe and support my efforts. We will cover next topic from CCNA exam guide in the next video. Stay tuned.